Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Understanding Construction Drawings. I'm a professor of construction management and I've written a number of books in different areas including Understanding Construction Drawings and Project Management, Planning and Scheduling. So in this series, I'm going to try to help you learn how to read construction drawings. We're going to stick with residential drawings in this series and I'm going to be starting out with site plans. We'll go through uh, various drawings that are involved in site plans in other videos, but we'll go thoroughly through one today. And it's one that I actually used in my textbook, so you can get a good idea what's involved there. Let's go take a look, shall we? All right, now what's a site plan? Well, a site plan is what we call an orthographic drawing. It's a flat on view of the property that will show where the building is going to go on that property. So if you're going to be constructing a house or you're going to be constructing a warehouse or a condominium building, you would have basically a site plan that would show the property lines and where that particular house is going to be located. We have to know where we're going to place the building on the property. So we have to know where basically the edges of the property are and how far from the edges the building will go. On a site plan, we're also provided with a lot of elevations. Now, elevations can be confused, can be a little bit confusing because sometimes we talk about elevations of buildings. That's another whole type of drawing where you look at the face of an elevation or the face of the building and what it looks like. And we'll do that in some uh, succeeding videos that we go through. But elevations on a site plan, it's really talking about in relationship to generally mean sea level or to some benchmark that's been established close to the site. And so mean sea level because we want to know, for example, infrastructure, if we have uh, basically uh, stormwater uh, drainage systems. We want to make sure that the water flows by gravity. And so they have to have certain elevations which are based on the average sea level. So everything is referenced from a certain point. So then they know how to set uh, the actual sewer pipes in that case. In our case, we want to know basically the elevations of things like the finished grade. We want to make sure the finished grade slopes away from the building. We want to know the depth of the footing. How deep do we have to go below the ground? And so that if we have all of that established ahead of time, we can ensure that we excavate the right amount of earth so that basically the bottom of our footings will be at the right elevation. Some people would call that height, but we call it elevation and construction. So that when we pour our footings, put our foundation walls on it, frame our floors, that our first floor is just at the right level so that we can step in from outside and be at that first floor level. So you'll see a lot of that information referenced on site plans as well. You'll also see a compass reference. So you can sort of see this little compass reference over here and that will always be pointing north. All right, so that's pointing north. Of course, if that's north, they don't give you south and they expect that you would know west and east. Um, some people have trouble with that. So usually we'll say um, basically never, the, the old saying is never eat shredded wheat. N, east, south, west, or it just spells we. So that is your reference point. You'll also see streets, if there's a street name and that sort of thing. On larger drawings, there'll be what we call a key map that will show you uh, basically where it is in the overall vicinity and location of uh, the other properties around. But usually residential, you usually sort of get just this. And we can sort of look at this and get a good idea of some of the things that we're looking at. And I'm going to see if I can pull up over here, maybe a highlighter pen uh, that I can maybe highlight things for you so you can see it a little bit. So this is the curb. That's your curb, right? And this over here, that's a sidewalk, right? So this is basically your sidewalk and you've got a little bit of a grassy area that's going to be sort of like a little bit of a boulevard in between the sidewalk and the curb uh, and 
to identify, usually what I do when I'm looking at a site plan, I try to identify where is the property and then where is the building in relation to the property. So if I follow this along here, you can see that basically is the edge of one property line. And then I'm looking at through this here, I can see this line that goes up here, that going down, way down, straight down, it's a little wiggly there is the basically the west property line and then we can sort of slide along the bottom on the south here we can see the south property line we can see it's a little bit of an irregular uh, kind of almost pie shaped lot but not quite pie shaped shall we say and then we can see here the final property line so we can see these are the edges, the boundaries of the property. And this is significant to know because then you're going to see information such as how far back is the building from the property line. Maybe I can change colors here uh, to show the building a little bit different. But you can sort of see here there's, it says 10.53. Well, that means it's 10.53 meters back from the uh, south property line. You know, if you're in a different jurisdiction, your measurements might be an imperial. You might, you know, it might be saying 25 foot six from the back property line or something of that nature. So it's telling you basically, usually it's in decimals uh, when you're given information on site plans. Uh, even in imperial, it's usually in decimals. Uh, which is unusual for Imperial. Um, but for site plans, that's usually how it's provided. So in this case, we've got 10.53 meters, which is 10,530 millimeters. You just have to move things uh, three decimal places to the right, and that will tell you what it is in uh, millimeters, if that's um, to your liking. But generally speaking, because site plans are bigger, they're given in meters. Uh, when you're building a house, though, uh, if it's in metric, it would be in millimeters or it'd be feet and inches. Okay, so right here, we've got our uh, front yard setback, which is from the north side of the lot, 5.75 meters, which is going from this point down to that point. So that's how far back that is. This is how far back the house is going here. And then from the side property line, you can just see 1.25 meters. So that's sort of giving it to you right from that point to that point. And that's to the edge of the house. So now we're getting to know where the edge of the house is going to be. Maybe I'll pick a different color again here for the house. Uh, maybe a light blue, something like that. All right, so the edge of the house going down the one side of the house uh, is there so that's the edge of the house there and this is the back of the house and then this is the east side of the house and the north side of the house this part here is basically your front stairs right so that's your front steps going into the house right uh, this is the porch so this area in here is the porch and this here is the entrance to the garage, right? So I can kind of see where the foundation wall it's showing here is a little bit going around. That would be the edge of the garage. And I got an idea of that because it says UFG. And UFG is basically underside of footing garage. So the other point I wanted to make for you, and I'll just highlight that down there, is there is always a legend, or at least there should be, and especially on site plans. You know, there's no site plan design police that sort of says that basically whoever's doing the site plan, they have to follow certain conventions. Although there are certain conventions for symbols and abbreviations, uh, but generally they'll have a legend like this nicely drawn one by Cassidy and Company. This is the drawings that I used in my um, books. Uh, for print reading, they do great drawings, and um, that's really your first go-to. How are they identifying everything? What symbols are they using? There are standardized symbols, but what are they using, right? 
and most of them are standard but some of them are maybe a little bit unique and so this is where you would know what they are so you always get yourself oriented by where is the edge of the property where is the actual house itself boundaries what are the setbacks like here we've got 1.82 meters and that's going from this point to that point or corner of the building to the east property line outward right so it's going at 90 degrees at that point from the property line there so as long as you have the setbacks and realistically if you have this one and you have this one you can pretty much uh, associate where the house is on the lot with that and so those are fundamentally important measurements so then you also have like i said these elevations and these are in reference to mean sea level so here we're saying 112.22 i think the lake from this development it wasn't too far i think it may have been like six or seven or eight kilometers so or five miles so at uh basically the closest monument uh, might be down to uh, 110, somewhere a few blocks away, right? Because uh, there's monuments that are then placed all around towns and cities that are established elevations. So basically when you're surveying it, those elevations can then be referenced so that you've got accuracy to the mean sea level. And then there's usually a benchmark somewhere that on the site that is located to say, all right, the top of this fire hydrant, that's... A frequent one a benchmark is usually something that's established that you know what the elevation is of that based on mean sea level so it would have been mentioned it would have been referenced from one of the monuments that are established around the town that surveyors had established that this is certain elevations and then this uh fire hydrant that would be the top of it for example might be 110 well then if this is 112.22 we know that from that fire hydrant to the first floor basically should be 2.22 meters higher right so everything is referenced from that point point. Uh, and the underside of footing well from whatever that reference point if it was 110 it's going to be 0.48 millimeters lower than that reference point and you don't know it could be down the street around the corner down a hill or up a hill um, so that's where those are referenced to and referenced from and that's important and so that gives you the elevations and then the excavator whoever is doing the excavating you can then figure out what the setbacks are and setbacks are how far is the building located from the property line and the elevation how far should i dig this so now i've got a lot of good information i know where i should dig and how deep and of course they're going to dig it bigger so that they have room to work around the foundation uh, but they have a very good idea then of where they need to excavate and how deep very very important in construction now of course we also see on these drawings we see uh, a bunch of point elevations as well like that says 110.32 this says 110.23, 111.02. So this is telling me, oh, this is 111.202 at that little X. This is 110.23. So then I can do a little bit of uh, math there. And I think that's going to work out to 772. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. So just 111.02 minus 110.23. Now I know how much it's dropping. And so it's dropping a fair bit in a short amount of space. Hence, you notice this hatching here with these little lines. What is that? Well, if I go over here on my legend, it says embankment, three to one slope. So it is going to drop one uh it's just say maximum approximately one meter for every three meters but we can see the spot elevations of what that should be so it's actually going to be about 700 and uh where did i get that that's 772 millimeters or 0.72 
meters, right? So in that distance. So that means it's going to drop down. That's good information. When I'm looking at this, I'm looking for that kind of information to be shown. I'll talk about contour lines in another video because very often you'll see lines across the drawing and those will give you elevations that the property is either currently at or going to be at when it's finished. It can give both so that you can then grade it so that the property falls away from the house the right amount given also the terrain that you're dealing with you know you will have to build in certain terrains and often you don't have a ton of choice uh, about how you're going to um, create that finished grade other than to make sure that you have the water flowing away from the house and there's a variety of ways that that can be accomplished but on some grades you might have a really steep grade down the back it might give you an opportunity in the design to have a walkout basement where you can just walk right out of the basement you don't have to uh, go upstairs to get outside right so there's some opportunities with grade that you can take advantage of in the design as well so I'm just going to go to a little bit more of a close-up. Now that I've given you sort of that outline of things, we can see that close-up over here. And maybe I'll just um, stick with that. All right, so maybe I'll go with a laser pointer here. Okay, so we did the setbacks. We also should notice things that are going on around the property. Like it says, storm easement. Well, what exactly is a storm easement, right? In this case, it's actually a little bit of a laneway. There's actually a natural uh, regeneration area. There's a little bit of a tributary river behind it. Um, so the actual storm water from the storm sewers. So you see this SAN, STM? Well, that is the elevations that the sanitary drain and the storm drain coming from the house will be at to connect to this basically um, the drains that are on the street okay and so this is what we call a catch basin and the catch basin if we go to that symbol on the previous slide uh, previous slide here uh, so we can see that if we look at the symbols it says catch basin in this case there's two catch basins side by side sometimes there will be only one so it's just shown with a rectangle uh, to indicate that. So in this case, we got, uh, sorry, two squares side by side that we can actually see that on. All right, so we're getting an idea. We can also see there's a bit of a drop off on grade around the edge. Well, like I said, there's kind of this tributary area, natural regeneration. They're going to have a bike path, path back here and a whole bunch of stuff uh, when it's finished, but that's not part of this actual house here. So we're just focusing on this particular house what's going on but i can see this is 110.23 this is 109.83 so i know there's going to be a slope the ground is going to slope this way well ideally you want the water to flow away from the building also i notice there's a steep grade in between the houses right because it's got that uh, again that uh, hatching here to show that there's a steep grade drop so i know over here it's going to be 112.40 and then over here 110.3 so there's a pretty steep grade there i also see these arrows and those arrows mean that they're swales they're little indentations that redirect the water in a certain direction so the swales are create in planned on purpose indentations that redirect the water it's kind of like when you uh, go on uh, the highways outside the, the city or town and you see at the side there's these big ditches. Well, those are swales that redirect the water um, so that places don't flood out. The ideal is that this house will redirect excess water. Well, the ideal is that it absorbs its own water and redirects excess water away from it without flooding neighboring properties. So I'll probably talk about that in another video when we talk about a plat plan. You know, in the U.S., they te we'll typically call it a plot plan. Uh, in Canada, we very often call it a site plan on uh, different parts crisscross. So we're looking at a plot plan or a site plan uh, of a particular house. But beyond that, there's a plot plan for the whole subdivision to make sure that when you're finished this subdivision, you don't flood out 
basically the subdivision that was built 25 years ago down the street. It has to be calculated uh, to ensure that surface water runoff is taken care of. And so there has to be a design for storm and sanitary sewers. Storm carries storm water, sanitary carries wastewater from inside the house, like toilets, etc. That will be treated where storm water will go straight into if you got if you're near a lake, it'll it'll eventually find its way to rivers or lakes. Uh, if near an ocean, it'll go towards the ocean, right? Uh, so it just depends where you're located. Okay. So we can we can get an idea there. Like I said, this is the front of the garage. So it's also telling you what the slope will be for the driveway. So it's a 5% slope. But realistically, you're looking at this elevation, 111.77 and 111.48. And that's what's going to give you that slope. You'll have that the difference between 0.77 and 48. What's that? That's 0 0.29 or 290 millimeters. So from this point here to that point it's dropping almost a foot right it's dropping almost a foot or 290 um, millimeters so you're looking at the differences in elevation whether it's imperial or metric doesn't matter but you're looking at the differences in elevation and that tells you slope higher larger number it's higher lower number it's lower uh, in comparatively uh, so you can see that so we're going to take a look at some of the little uh, what what we're actually looking at on this particular drawing. Like there's some information like it'll say 10R. 10R means that it's going to be 10 risers. So that's the step, right? So the step is the tread. The vertical part is the risers. So if there's 10 risers, there'll be nine treads. You can think of it that way. There's always one less tread than risers. So there'll be 10 risers, 9 treads. They always tell you risers though. 5 risers, so it's going to be 1. And then you got these little steps here. So 2, 3, 4, 5. Down to this little probably patio stones or paving brick uh, walkway out to the driveway um, there. So that's the 5 risers. So you'd have 1 from inside to the porch. And then you'd have 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, that's what that's referring to. This is saying you have a sunken laundry. So this is saying what the elevation of this laundry room will be here, right? So how much lower is this? It's sunken. It's just telling you that that is going to be lower. They usually do that one riser. So that's roughly, it'll probably be somewhere between like 175 and 200 millimeters, or if you like, uh, seven and, and basically seven to just under eight inches um, um, from that perspective, right? Uh, so they do that so that you don't have a lot of steps in the garage to the slab because if you have a lot of steps, then you can't fit the car in. So they get it close by dropping this a riser um, there. So that's very that's very frequently done where the garage is a, like part of the inside part of the house. They'll usually uh, have a sunken laundry that bridges that difference in elevation. Elevations are so important when it comes to reading and understanding construction drawings uh, from that perspective. You really want to understand that so that you can get the right depth of excavation that's going to make everything else go nicely from that point. All right, so let's take a, uh, a little bit of a look around uh, here. We've got our legend close up here. Uh, again, things like a street light, fire hydrant, transformer, valve chamber, water service, uh, catch basin, storm and sanitary connections I showed you, single storm and sanitary, uh, swale direction is the arrow. You might have like uh, for infrastructure, the utilities, they, they usually have easements or right-of-ways on your property that they can run cable uh, wiring, uh, your telephone wiring. You may even have a mailbox, a uh, community mailbox, if you don't have home delivery. And that might be on your site plan. So it's good to know if this is in proximity to your property. Uh, because is everybody going to be stopping and collecting their mail at midnight? I don't know. Uh, exterior door location, side window location. So these are just symbols that they'll use and these are all the abbreviations that are helpful. Now you see when it's in brackets, that's referring to an existing elevation or if it's just listed like this, it's a proposed elevation. I can't remember if they give any existing elevations on this, you'd have to look. Um, and the risers, 
Reverse plans, that just means that there's a mirror image plan. So basically it's a mirror image. In a subdivision, you typically have uh, maybe four or five designs. Then they have different fronts on the designs and then they're mirror imaged so that basically the, dry, the garage might be on the opposite side. They might have different finishes on the front so that it looks, the houses look a lot different on the street, but inside the houses, they're mostly the same. So there's that that goes on as well. We'll talk about that in another class uh, that, or another lesson that we'll do. All right, so you can get the idea of some of these abbreviations. Some of these are very unique to this particular designer, but like I said, you look at the legend. Whenever you get a set of drawings, look at the legend. Also visualize where am I? Where's north? Where's south, west, east? Get your orientation, your bearings. All right, where's the property line? Where are basically the corners of the property? What's the setback for the building? Then we start to get that. Okay, so what elevations are we going to have? See, these are all finished elevations that I'm showing you here. You don't see any brackets on any of these particular ones. Um, so, well, but very frequently you may see ones with brackets on different site plans. So as I was saying, so you can better visualize this because this was a, a, a real house that was built and I took photos as it was being constructed. Uh, you can see this is what I'm talking about, the catch basins. They don't even have the curbs in yet, but there's the catch basin, right? So these are the actual ones. Uh, looking out this way, as I said, there's there's it's a huge site. It's all built in now, but on the other side uh, was farmland. And in between across here, it's basically a low point with a little creek that runs through that. And so, of course, that becomes part of the stormwater management system. They have to design the capacity for the subdivision to be able to absorb 100 year worst storms with a factor of safety built on top of it. Something we're struggling with with climate change these days because uh, you know 100 year storms, I think New York City's had 300 year storms in the last 10 or 15 years. So you have to reevaluate, well, what's a 100 year storm? But uh, that's how this is calculated for uh, water management systems. All right, and so that's the direction. This is the house that we're looking at, the edge of the house. And you can kind of see here, there's a little bit of a box window that juts out there. So you see that little box window that's jutting out there. And so it's standing there and we're looking down here. Um, so I'm in front of this, uh, basically the um, catch basins at this point. Now you can see the red arrow. We're looking down here. We're looking out to that point. You can sort of see if you look at the side of the house and you're visualizing. Remember I said there's a big drop off here. So it's important that whenever you look at a set of drawings and it takes some practice and it takes some time, but you try to visualize what am I looking at? And you know, I've been reading drawings my whole life and people, you know, they'll throw a set of drawings in front of me. Like I've got a bunch back there that I've been um, working on with uh, a former student that's now got a very successful business and trying to train some of their people. Uh, but it's it's kind of a complicated set of drawings and it takes me hours to really get a grasp of what's going on. I really work, go through the drawings in a very sort of methodical way. And so a good starting point is the site plan. Like where is this building going? What's the What's the outside sizes of this building? And how is it gonna be located on the property and visualizing things like changes in elevation, dramatic changes. Probably don't pay too much note to minor uh, changes at the first go over, but I do see stuff like this quite a bit. Or if there's contour lines, I do see where they're close together and there's a quick change in slope. Um, so you take a good look and that's why I said highlighters can be quite helpful whether you're using it digitally or whether you're using it on paper to really get a grasp of the edges of things and it makes it pop um, so you can see it a little bit better too. It's a good tool to use that way. So yeah, now I'm looking, I'm standing right there. I'm looking this way. Oh, there's that drop. Remember I said the embankment is one to three. So that would be whenever you have a ratio, just think of it. It's okay. So it's one to three. All right, so I just got to get it the right way. And this way, in this case, it's not super steep. So it's going to be one meter to three meters, not three meters to one meter. It'd be too much of a drop, right? Um, so in this case, it's one meters to three meters, especially for like a side yard of a house, um, that kind of drop. 
Um, so it's a it's a gradual um, drop. It does mean that these footings are actually stepped lower so that they go down full four feet. That's another topic for another day, but that definitely uh, is ensuring that the footings stay below the frost level as the grade changes. Um, so we can see that and we can visualize that. And so that's the elevation is around there, 111.02, 110.23 at the corner. Um, this is basically surveyors will put in steel iron bar. Sometimes you'll see even on a site plan, it might say SIB for steel iron bar or steel monuments. Uh, the square bars hammered in at the corners of the lot. And this is basically to signify where the corners of the lot are. And that way you've got points that you can actually then measure from to see where the building is going to go if you've had it recently surveyed. Here, this is this little dot here. Remember, you got to look at the legend. What am I looking at? Valve chamber, water service. Well, you see the line going through it? That's the water service. That's basically a shutoff valve so that you can shut the water off from the outside. Maybe you've got a leak on the inside. The valve won't shut off. And over time, they can shut the water off from the street, right? So maybe they don't want you using any water inside because they're doing some work on it. So they can shut it off from the outside. So this is an infrastructure requirement that you have that ability. So that's your shutoff right there. Um, there. I don't know why they always put it in the middle of the driveway, but that's another story. Um, so there you have it there. And um, transformer. Okay, well, if it's a new subdivision, likely your hydro lines aren't above ground. They're usually put below ground. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about them uh, blowing over in a snowstorm or, or ice storm or something like that. So that's a little bit better for the infrastructure. Uh, so and a little bit cleaner in the neighborhoods too. Um, so, but it does mean you have to have transformers periodically. You know, every few houses there'll be a transformer. If you're buying a house and you don't want a transformer on your front lawn, then look for the symbols before you buy the house, and that'll give you a good indicator for that. That's what I always say. You really want to, you know, if I was buying a new house in a new, in a subdivision, they have all these little kind of fancy sort of pictorial views they'll show you of the property or whatever i say i want to see the site plan because it's going to show me is there a mailbox on my front lawn is there a um is there a transformer am i okay with it maybe i'm okay because the lot's such a great location or whatever but it's nice to know um, those things and there's those little symbols to say the elevation the depth that the drain pipe which would be a storm and a sanitary pipe are coming from your house and they have to slope from your house to basically um, the sewers, uh, the storm sewers and the sanitary sewers that are running under your street. So that has to work. If it doesn't work, that's a problem. Remember I said there was a storm easement. Well, this is what I'm talking about. So there's gonna be a walkway between these two houses out to the street. There's gonna be a little bit of a path, like I said, going in behind uh, these houses here. And this is that little creek out to the creek. So the storm water that goes in those catch basins and many others on that street will find their way to here, right? Some subdivisions may also have drainage collection areas for massive storms so that if it doesn't flood out basically the rivers and it stores a certain amount and then lets it down slowly after the most severe part of the storm has passed. That's all being engineered in the design of the subdivision. So that's what the easement is referring to in this particular case. And that's what it looks like. Fire hydrant. Now, in other drawings that we look at, floor plans and things like that, you'll see this symbol pretty much means a light in like a floor plan. Uh, it looks pretty much the same. But on a site plan, in this site plan, it means a fire hydrant. All right. So know what it is that you're actually um, looking at from that perspective. Uh, fire hydrant, maybe your uh, insurance will be less if it's right on your front, uh, just in front of the sidewalk there. Uh, never know. All right, the swales. So if you didn't really picture the swales, well, this one here, I took this picture basically from down here. I'm looking up and so it's sloping really good down here uh, because you want the water to run really quickly and the other part it doesn't really matter as long as it's got a slope it doesn't have to have this severe slope but that's what it has because this is lower and 
from the sides of these houses. The water's running from the backs towards this, all the way up there, and then it's running along. Further down, it actually starts to run the other way because they have a catch basin and it goes into that. Uh, but from as far as they've got a good slope, then it runs in this direction and runs down. So that's the location of a swale, and that's how uh, the swales run off. Giving you a good perspective there, I think. This is really good too. Excellent, um, I think, illustration. So remember I said there's quite a slope here, so you can see that slope. Uh, if we go back, we can see that from about this point, it actually slopes towards the front. All right, so I think it's maybe over there. It starts to slope to the front, but from about here back. And if we look at the finish, so look at these elevations carefully. 110.45, 110.45. So that would be the finish grade should be here and there. And then in the middle, 110.3. So it's going to drop six inches here and six inches there. So you're trying to get the water away from the houses and out, and then it's going to run on the back and it's going to run down towards the other swales that are going to take it out. You're getting rid of the water. And so understanding site plans and elevations, that's what you're looking at. That's going to be higher. So it's going to be like this when it's finished. Right now it's just rough graded, so it's not quite right yet. Uh, the other thing is, this shouldn't be against the brick. So when they're finished grading this, it's a little bit high now for whatever. They'll, they'll scrape this down along. They'll have the elevation drop six inches in the middle. They'll have this, but they'll also keep the brick away from the finished sod, the grass that's gonna be going on there. And again, uh, you know, for our building codes for brick, it's, uh, get this right, it's 150 millimeters. For wood, it's 200 millimeters. So say you had a wood siding or something. Because you don't want the brick absorbing the moisture um, from the ground. Uh, you know, it can deteriorate the brick over time. So that's, uh, concrete's much better. And then this brick actually has a membrane that's underneath it. So it shouldn't be absorbing much uh much moisture up through the concrete into the brick. If you don't have a membrane, then yeah, it's gonna absorb and it's not great. Uh, you get freeze thaw cycles over time. Brick's a very resilient material, but it does run into problems that way um, over time. So yeah, this is just recapping this. This is our drawing again. Uh, we covered basically the setbacks, where the house is located around on the property. We see these differences in elevations. We see where the finished floor is, the underside of footing, the underside of footing at the rear, the underside of footing at um, top of um, basically TBW as top of basement wall. Sometimes it says TFW, top of foundation wall, you know, just different terminology. That's where looking at this can be so helpful. Lot area, building coverage, lot coverage. These are specifically for zoning. They're trying to make sure that uh, you know, every town, municipality, they have certain zoning requirements. How much can this house cover of this property? Uh, what are the setback requirements, right? Um, so they have different uh, zoning requirements. And so yours may be slightly different, whatever your township is requiring or your city is requiring that way. But there's usually stuff um, dealing with this. This is dealing with building code and location of windows along the line, you know, close to the property lines. There's definite building code restrictions uh, that we run into called limiting distance. And that sort of depends on whether we can have windows on that side of the wall, if we can, how far back they are and what basically um, square meters or square feet uh, are they. And so there's a whole bunch of code requirements that get into that, but that's more in the building process, but it will show up on your site plan typically. Uh, depending again on your municipality's uh, requirements for that. So hopefully that's giving you a good introduction. I think I'm going to just run through a few other different site plans in other videos before we move on to uh, floor plans. We'll go through a few different ones to make sure that you're getting that, looking at it in different ways and different points of view. Uh, so uh, I'm Tom Stevenson. You know, if you want questions uh, to practice on, you could always uh, get my book. Uh, it's on Amazon, uh, Understanding Construction Drawings for Housing and Small Buildings. It comes with sets of prints and literally uh, 1,500 questions that you can answer. 
on these uh, topics. And if you enjoyed this and want to see more and you want to be notified, click subscriptions, uh, click the notifications, uh, have questions or comments, put them in the comments section as we build the con professional construction community together. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.